Hi, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Thank you for coming to my podcast. Uh, I start every podcast the same way. I want to let you know that everything that I say on these podcasts, I really spend a lot of time preparing and, and I read the research and I get ready for it. So anything that I share here that you're wondering, well, where did he get that? Where does that come from? Is there some research behind that? Please look in the description section of this video and you'll see a citation list of works that I go to. Why this is important to you as a consumer of information is because one, you want to be able to rely on the information you get. It is important. And two, you want to have that ability to go back and look at it yourself and then maybe springboard off of that and learn even more. Never take what I say as just being the only truth. It's so important that you do that. It's so important that when you look at the material I give you, you have an opportunity to think, well, why does he think that way? Where does this come from? Do I agree with him? And then when you read where I got this information from, you can come to your own conclusion and agree with me or not, but at least you see where I came with this. So with that said, I want to go into today's topic, which is thyroid. And that's a, another one that's really important. I've been planning on doing this podcast for years and um, years, years. And I remember when I spoke to the producer about starting this, he's like, we we're talking about material. And I was like, I have, a, I have a stack of things I want to talk about that I've been taking notes and, and, and stacking up material. And then, you know, a lot of it comes from cases I've experienced. And uh, so I'm just working through that stack right now. And, and the next one is thyroid on my list. And, and what about the thyroid? What is thyroid? For those of you who don't know what thyroid is, I'll give you the real simple explanation. Think of the thyroid as the dimmer switch of metabolism in your body, okay? It plays a role with the metabolism in your body. It can either turn metabolism up or turn it down. We all have a thyroid. Where I really wanted to focus on this today is to those of you who do take thyroid or wonder about your thyroid. I see so many patients coming to my clinic and... There's so much confusion around thyroid. Am I taking the right medicine? Is the medicine I'm taking working? Do I really have hypothyroidism? What's going on with my thyroid? How do I understand this? And a lot of people will be taking their thyroid medication and say, I don't see a difference before and after. It does nothing for me. So these are all important things to be answered. And they're not always answered by your physician, sadly. And that's one thing, I, I want you to know this, please, another thing to take home. The word doctor, I think I said this in a previous episode, the word doctor comes from the Latin word docere, and that means to teach, okay? The role of the physician is to give you an understanding of what's happening. Then you make the decision based upon that information. You make an informed decision, an educated decision. The role of the physician is to teach, to educate you. And, and also in my part, I always believe in letting you know where I got my information from so you know where I'm thinking or how I'm thinking as well. So, so back to the thyroid. Um, people will go to their doctors, they get their thyroid, and a lot of them will be on medications they're not quite sure if they're working. And, and, and they'll ask their doctor, and their doctor will say, oh, your lab looks fine. So, so let's talk about this. What, what would a low thyroid, let me step back a little bit and, and, and talk about someone coming into the clinic, starting off and not knowing what's going on and their metabolism slowed down. So the person will present to clinic and a thyroid deficiency would present with things like, you know, the hair is not growing very well. You know, um, they may have some diffuse hair loss. Their nails don't grow very well. Uh, they have some skin issues. Digestion slows down. Some people who knows weight gain. That's a big one. You know, thyroid is always thought of as like this solution for weight. And, and it helps with weight. It's not perfect, but it helps. Okay, I want you to know that. Taking thyroid will not cause you to lose X amount of weight. It, it helps with your metabolism, okay? So, so a patient will present all of these symptoms. And, and another one they present with is brain fog. They don't think very clearly. And that's a big one. That's really important with thyroid. I've noticed with my patients. The thing you need to know is the lab work that's usually done for you, for your thyroid, is really pedestrian. It's generally the most basic panel. It's not very helpful. So let's talk about the thyroid and how to test it and understand it. There's three areas your doctor should be looking at for testing your thyroid 
for just a baseline looking at your thyroid, okay? The first one's called TSH, and that's your pituitary. And your pituitary has a thermostat. Just think of that. Your pituitary has a thermostat that says, you know, how high is your metabolism? If the thermostat here thinks your metabolism is too low, it's going to send a message down to the thyroid gland here. So if your pituitary thinks you don't have enough thyroid, it's going to send TSH down to the thyroid gland to make T4. So as the brain thinks you need more, it sends a signal here, then this gland makes T4. Now T4 is a precursor of the actual active hormone T3. T4 has no biological activity in your body whatsoever, okay? Maybe a micro, tiny bit, but not enough to really talk about. T4 rolls through your circulation, and when it goes to your liver and your muscle and other places specifically that have an enzyme called 5 prime deiodinase, T4 gets converted into T3. Think of that as like a hand grenade where you pull the pin and all of a sudden it's active. And so now this molecule is explosive with energy, so to speak. As soon as it clicks onto your cell, boom, metabolism's turned on. T3 is the thing that does all the work. T3 is the most important thing we measure when it comes to the treatment of thyroid in people. A patient presents to clinic with a low thyroid. They have hair loss. They're going to have the dry skin. They're going to have their nails don't grow. All these things, they don't feel right. The T3 binding to the cell is what does those things for the cell to produce hair. It's what produces the nails. It's what helps with gastric motility. It's what increases metabolism throughout the body. It's what promotes cognitive function. T3 does all of that. So when a person presents to clinic and their lab work, they get drawn, just the TSH, that's what most clinics do, almost all clinics. This is the problem. And many of you are gonna see this video and be like, I know, that's what I get, and it's frustrating. All they run is your TSH. Or maybe TSH with a reflex to T4. So you're going to be looking at what your pituitary's opinion of your thyroid is and how much maybe T4, thyroid hormones, being made from here. But they don't measure T3, which is the hormone that does the actual work. So say your thyroid, your, your TSH is off, your T4, they're like, okay, we'll prescribe you medication based on your TSH alone. And they prescribe you medicine. They'll prescribe maybe levothyroxine or Synthroid, okay? Levothyroxine and Synthroid are purely just T4. That's all it is. It's just this, just that. Remember, as I mentioned a minute ago, this has no biological activity. Synthroid and levothyroxine does not do anything until it gets bioconverted into T3. T3 does all the work. It binds the cell, it makes everything happen. So when a person is given T4 in his levothyroxine or Synthroid, and it goes into their body, if their body doesn't turn into T3, it doesn't do anything. When you give a person T4 as a standalone therapy, you need to look at the T3 to make sure they're making the active hormone from it. T4 needs to turn to T3 for something to happen. You can measure the TSH, the opinion of this, you can measure the T4 all you want but it doesn't mean you have T3. T3 is everything. It's the most important thing you will do. It doesn't always get tested. It's rare that it gets tested. It should always be tested. Backing up just a little bit with testing, just one more thing that's very specific. When you run a TSH, T4 and T3, you need to have the T4 and T3 be free. It's called free. Because the T4 and T3, when you test it in your lab, it tends to be bound to protein. When it's bound to protein, it's inert. Okay, T3 bound to protein doesn't really work. Free T3 is really doing the work. So again, when you run the lab, you want to run your TSH, T4, and T3, but you want to make sure that they're free and bioavailable. That's the test to run. Why would it be that I give someone T4 as a standalone Synthroid by itself or levothyroxine as itself, by, by itself, on its own as a medication? Why wouldn't it turn to T3, Brendan? Why? Why wouldn't it do that? Good question. When you give a person T4 as a standalone, you're relying on that enzyme, 5' prime diiodinase to convert T4 into T3. You needed to do that, that click. That enzyme doesn't always work. It's not always upregulated. 
people with chronic stress, it doesn't work very well. Sometimes you'll have a person who has T4 that's adequate, but they're not converting it to T3 very well because they also have a deficiency of zinc and selenium. See, it doesn't always mean you need to prescribe more drugs. Sometimes you need to understand where the problem is. What if the person just has a zinc and selenium deficiency? That's not, that's not a problem. Run the lab, do the work, figure it out, give them the right medication. You can solve it that way too. So when a patient presents to clinic with thyroid, I want to run the most expansive panel, and it's not the most expensive either. It's not ex By the way, this is not expensive. It's in, the, in, the situ in medicine, among all the labs out there, it's not that much to add this in there. It really isn't. It is, it's small. So when you get a patient, when I get a patient at clinic, when, when we have a, a, a patient in our practice who presents uh, from another place or whatever, they're already on thyroid, they're on levothyroxine or synthroid, it's not working. They don't feel right. The TSH looks fine. T4 looks fine. T3 is very low. What do we do? How do we fix it? One, I want to see, can I help them convert T4 into T3? Can I enhance the 5 prime diiodinase, that enzyme, with zinc and selenium? Is there a lot of stress going on in their lives? I look at that first. Sometimes it's just how it is with that person. They just don't convert very well. Sometimes, though, the enzyme can be enhanced with giving them just a little T3 as a medication. That's the part. That's the part that's missing for a lot of people. The levothyroxine or synthroid is fine. They just need a little bit of T3 to make it work. So we will prescribe in those cases a little bit of something called Cytomel or triiodothyronine because that will help enhance the T4 to T3 conversion. But also that triiodothyronine or Cytomel is the other name of the medication itself binds to the cell and gives them that benefit. So it works that way. That's how it works. That's the best way for it to work. We then run labs to verify that it had that effect with those patients. So again, patient presents, we give them, they're already on T4, they're levothyroxine or they're on Synthroid. They're not converting it to T3. The T3 still is a little bit on the low end. We're to try and figure out how to make the enzyme work better. Maybe we'll prescribe them zinc, selenium, maybe we'll deal with their stress, or maybe we'll write them that prescription for the Cytomel or triiodothyronine. We rerun the labs a month later and we see what it did, where it went to. Once we have it at the ideal level where the free T3 is up at the higher end of the range of normal and the T4, free T4 is at the higher end of the range of normal, we leave them on that for several months at a time. We run the labs every six months and we monitor them that way. What is the benefit a person would see with this? How would this benefit them? Well, hair grows better. Hair grows better with better thyroid. It just does. Nails grow back. You know, you think, well, Brendan, those are, those are aesthetic things. And, and, and true, they are aesthetic, but they do play a role with us as, as human beings. They're important. What about weight? Everyone thinks about thyroid for weight. And that was so popular in like the 90s. To, there was like clinics. That's all they did was they dumped thyroid into people to ramp up metabolism, see if they burn off their calories. That's not safe to do. It's like Goldilocks with thyroid. You can't go too high. You can't go too low. It's not safe to go too high or too low. You need to be very precise. That's why we run labs every six months to make sure they're staying in that range. But will it help with weight loss? Studies show people lose up to 12 pounds by optimizing their thyroids. And please know that you can see that in the citations. And that was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinological Metabolism. So that's a, that's a, that's a thing. Do I see people with a lot of weight loss with thyroid? Eh, depends. Sometimes, yes. Not always. What I do see with people with thyroid with optimizing it and why I think you should look into it, neurological function. Your brain works better on thyroid. Think of this. As we get older, it's very common for thyroid to drop off with age. We slow down metabolism with age, and T3 will drop off with age. And a lot of times we'll hit like our 40s, 50s, and 60s, and be like, you know, walk into a room, like, where did I go? Why am I in this room? What am I doing in this room? Or where did I put my keys? Or what's that person's name? Or dates? We just start forgetting things. You know what I mean? You think like, oh, this is dementia this is it <laughs> the darkness is coming i'm over you know and that's not really what's happening a lot of times it's that t3 level is going down and so again there's a wonderful study in the citations that'll discuss how optimizing t3 
improves cognitive function, specifically executive function of your brain, allowing you to get through your day and have better functioning. I see that every case that I treat with thyroid. Optimizing that T3 when it comes to cognitive is everything. So, so that is a real life benefit of optimizing your thyroid. To close, if you're on thyroid, there's a high probability you don't think your thyroid works. You know, the medicine you're taking, you're like, I don't know if this really works. Some people it does, some people it does, but very few, okay? Very few times will we run a lab on someone who's on levothyroxine or Synthroid and that free T3 is, is good. Very rare, very rare. But if you are that person, great. I want that for you. Everyone else, will it benefit you from looking at this? Yeah, it sure will. Specifically cognitive. Hair, yes. Nails, yes. Some little bit of weight but it definitely will have a benefit. As always, with these podcasts, it is my goal to provide you with something as a benefit that will be helpful. Uh, if this is something that is helpful to you and you get some benefit from it, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, uh, and that way I'll know to produce more of this. So thank you very much for tuning in and have a good day.